Warning, viewer discretion advised. People who have not taken an introduction to semiconductors should be accompanied by someone who has. This is Nathan. Today, we're going to show Nathan around the fabrication lab. Oh, it appears Nathan doesn't know what a fabrication lab is. Let's tell him. A fabrication lab is a workspace hosting a variety of machines which enable individuals to manufacture digital electronics, such as diodes, transistors, and a variety of other microelectronic devices. Most fabrication labs need to be very clean due to the fact that many contaminants, most of which the human eye can't even detect, are easily capable of damaging the devices you're trying to make. Let's start by going into the clean room. That's right, Nathan. You're not ready to go into the clean room just yet. First, you need to gown up. The gowning up process involves putting on booties, a frock, two pairs of gloves, safety glasses, a hairnet, and a beard cover. Long pants must also be worn. This equipment is only to keep you from contaminating the rooms and does not protect the wearer at all. Additional personal protective equipment must be worn on top of this if handling dangerous chemicals. Now we can go into the clean room. The fabrication lab on the Colorado School of Mines campus consists of two rooms, a clean room and a processing room. As the name suggests, the clean room is the portion of the lab where the processes that require extreme cleanliness are done. This room is a class 1000 environment, meaning that there are only 1000 particles greater than half a micrometer per cubic foot. For reference, an urban environment has over 35 million particles greater than half a micrometer per cubic meter. Now let's take a look at the processing room. The two rooms are connected by essentially a two-doored hole through the wall separating them. This is how samples are passed from one room to the other. These doors cannot both be open at the same time, as the less clean processing room could potentially contaminate the clean room. The processing room, on the other hand, is a bit more lax when it comes to this. This room is where high temperature processes such as oxidation and deposition are done, as well as house all of the essential characterization equipment such as the profilometer and the four-point probe. Now that we have gotten a look at the layout of each room, let's take a look at some of the individual machines. It is often necessary to clean the wafers before performing certain procedures. The most thorough clean done in this lab is the RCA clean, which must be performed before any high temperature processing steps such as oxidation and diffusion. This clean involves submerging the wafer samples first in an organic clean solution for 10 minutes, then a dip in a hydrofluoric acid solution for 15 seconds, then finally submerging in an ionic clean solution for 10 minutes. This is a somewhat time consuming step, but it is essential for producing functioning devices. One of the absolutely essential processes done in fabrication is called photolithography. This process is essentially imparting patterns on the surface of wafers. This is done by first covering the wafer with a substance known as photoresist. This substance reacts when exposed to high intensity light and actually changes its properties. Using a mask to block light from reaching certain areas of the wafer, patterns can be marked onto the surface. Photoresist acts as something of a barrier for certain processes, directing things like dopant deposition, etching, and metal contact placement. Photoresist is applied using a tool called a spin coder. This programmable device ensures that the photoresist is distributed evenly over the surface of the wafer by spinning at very high speeds. The process shown here is a ramp up speed of 500 RPM for 9 seconds and a full spin speed of 3000 RPM for 40 seconds. Once the photoresist is applied to the wafer, the patterns are imparted using the mask aligner tool. This machine exposes the photoresist covered wafer with UV light for a specified amount of time, 20 seconds in this case. This alters the chemical properties of certain portions of the photoresist so that it is removed when introduced to a developer solution. The mask aligner also has a microscope and precise control abilities for when it is necessary to align successive stages of lithography. Here is a piece that has gone through the entire photolithography process. Note how the patterns on the mask have been imparted onto the piece. 
Well, that about does it for the Colorado School of Mines Fabrication Lab. Clearly, the processes and equipment shown can be much more complicated than covered in this video, but this serves as a good introduction. So, Nathan, do you think you are now able to fabricate devices?